Okay, welcome to the ultimate guide on wave selection. And I'm going to go over how to select rights, lefts, and avoid closeouts. Now, wave selection is one of the harder things to learn for a beginner. And I've even seen a lot of intermediate towards advanced surfers with not the best wave selection. So pay attention whether you're just starting out or if you feel like you're a little bit more experienced, there's gonna be some things that you're gonna to learn today. Wave selection starts on the beach. So here we have our beautiful beach in Nosara, main beach uh, that we surf at sometimes. And you're gonna come up to the beach and if you know the beach, then you will have some familiarity with the contours of the sandbars, if it's a reef, and how waves tend to act. But every day is a little bit different. And especially if you're at a new beach, you're not going to be very familiar with how the waves are breaking. And as you gain experience, um, a lot of this is going to become more intuitive and it'll just be a quick glance. Uh, but even myself, living down here and surfing a lot, I'll give it a look while I'm stretching on the beach to kind of see where the waves are breaking, the size, consistency, and what's going on out there. So you're sitting on the beach and you're going to look where the waves are breaking and how they're breaking. Is it fast? Is it slow? Are there rights? Are there lefts? But you may not really be able to do that if you are just trying to identify those things in the first place. And that's really what this video is all about. Now, once we get out, we are going to be looking for a few things. First thing is going to be the peak and the shoulder. So what is the peak and what is the shoulder? The peak is the tallest point of the wave, okay? And then the shoulder is this area as the wave starts to go down from its highest point, okay? Now, Part of wave selection is it's seemingly simple, but as we've experienced by hosting hundreds of stand-up paddlers down here, it's not as simple as it appears as looking for the peak and the shoulder and positioning yourself in the right spot. And the reason for it is there are thousands almost of subtle things that we're looking for depending on the spot we're surfing, the swell that's in the water, the bottom contours, the sandbar, or reef. And so the more experience you become, the more adept you're going to become at looking for those subtle qualities in the water. So we have a peak in the shoulder, but somehow that gets lost once we get on the water and we're dealing with beginner to intermediates. That That's not as clear. And so if we learn what to look for and almost more so what not to look for, what we don't want, we're going to be able to get better at wave selection. So here's the peak, here's the shoulder as it drops down. Now sometimes it won't be as clear if there's a shoulder. And if you're unsure, if you're 50-50, maybe don't take the wave, okay? Part of wave selection is also being patient. And another thing to understand is that the better you get at your technical skills, so the better you get at your pivot turns, your J-stroke, your paddling technique, using your hips, those are all tutorial videos we have on our YouTube page, the better your wave selection is going to be because a lot of wave selection is having your head up and getting to the right spot, which we'll also cover in a different video. So simply put, the peak and the shoulder, and then because the peak is here and the shoulder as the wave goes down, the physics of that is gonna cause this particular wave to break from right to left, and therefore I want to ride to the left. So another thing you can also look for is fatness and steepness. So think of steep as hollow and barreling, okay? So a steep wave is hollow and kind of throwing the top part out, okay? Like a barrel, okay? That's a steep part of a wave. And then the fat part is as it literally gets, it, it's smaller often, but it could also remain the same height, but get a bit fatter, being that it's less 
steep, so it's less hollow. And that's also another indication that if I'm on a steep part and I got my head up and I see a fatter part over here, even if it's not dropping down a ton, that's an indication that the wave is going to break from the steep part towards the fatter section, and that also might be an indicator of what I'm looking for, okay? So then I'll play this forward, so you see I got the peak, and then the fat part of the wave, and the wave is going to break in that direction, and then I'm gonna do a turn to come back. Now, another thing to think about is our wave selection starts on the beach by observing the, the conditions, then once we're out on the water, I'm looking towards the horizon and I'm seeing the waves come in. And I'm looking anywhere between 50 and 100 yards out to the ocean. And on bigger days, sometimes you could see sets coming from either further, even further out. And that's when my wave selection starts because I'm seeing a peak. You can kind of see subtly, here's a little swell line right here. Obviously, this one's closer, but I'm seeing a peak. You see my head is up and I'm positioning myself to be more towards the peak. And again, we'll cover this in other videos um, as far as paddling to the spot. But for the sake of wave selection, I'm looking for the peak and then the shoulder. And I'm looking early on. So I identify, okay, here comes a set. And I'm seeing that when the wave is almost out here, okay, 50 to 100 yards out. What that's doing is that's giving me time to better position myself. So I, and I'm also, I'm going, okay, I see a little peak and then I'm looking for a drop and a, a drop down, which is the shoulder, okay? Now, if I, if I look out on the horizon and I just see one big long line with no drop, I'm, I'm making a calculation and I'm going, okay, that's probably gonna be a closeout, but as it gets closer, my head's up, I'm looking at it and that could change. And again, the, the better you get a wave selection, the more time and experience you have on the water, the more easily you're gonna be able to distinguish that and it's gonna become unconscious for you, okay? To the point that you're not really having to think about it. But in order to train this, it's gotta be in the conscious mind. So keep these things in mind when you go out and make it deliberate and practice patience and deliberate practice. Because if you're just out there and you're going for every wave and you're not deliberately thinking about these principles, you're not gonna improve your wave selection. So patience is a big thing too. And I like to tell people during any given session on a really good day on a beach break, maybe 50, 60% of the waves that come through are rideable and that's like really good. But for the most part, depending on where you're surfing, you gotta think that maybe 10, 20% of the waves that come through in relation to where you are, are actually gonna even be surfable. And, and to me, I tie that into patience. And that's also a wave selection thing, that every wave is not a wave we want. So being more selective, okay? But then also building that memory bank of, okay, I took that wave and I thought it was a right, but it ended up closing out. And then you stash that in your memory and that's where time and experience come into play. And the more reps you have, but deliberately, thinking about wave selection, the better you're gonna get at selecting the proper waves. And again, that also ties into having the technique to put yourself in a better spot to catch the wave. So going back to spotting the wave when it's more towards the horizon, 50 to 100 yards out, and I'm looking for the peak and then a drop. And I can make that, distinct, that, that distinction when the wave is five, 10, 15 seconds from reaching me. And so I've, I've spotted this wave out there and I'm positioning myself and here you can subtly see it, okay? There's a peak area, which is here, and then that's gonna, come more, that's gonna become more prominent as it reaches shallower water. So we have a peak area here and then dropping down towards the shoulder. And again, I'm looking for amplitude of the wave, so the height of the wave and then dropping down, but also steepness and fatness. So you can see it, it, you may not see it, but I see it when I'm on the water through experience, but the wave is a bit steeper here and a bit fatter here as the wave goes down, okay? So, and then we have a student over here, Giannis, who, who's, he's actually paddling for 
this shoulder, so any wave can have two shoulders, meaning you can have a split peak where you have a right and a left. I think this ends up being a bit of a closeout for him over here, but you can imagine we have the peak and then a shoulder here, and then on that same peak, but a little bit over and a shoulder coming down. And then you have waves that are more A-frames where the peak is more prominent and the shoulders are closer together. Okay, so you have like a peak and then a shoulder here and a shoulder there, and we call that an A-frame because it makes a nice A-frame shape. This is not an A-frame, but I just wanted to point it out. Now, as you see the wave come, it's going to develop amplitude and it's going to get higher as it hits the bottom and grows in height. And so that peak is going to become more prominent. It's steeper here. I'm positioning myself. Okay. And again, you see steepness, height, and then shoulder as it drops down. Really important that you have your head up during this whole process. Beginners and intermediate Santa paddlers tend to paddle with their head down a lot and you might as well be blindfolded. So how are you going to make these micro adjustments and observe the wave if you're looking down at your board? So you can see I'm glancing up. I'm looking down the line. I'm going, okay, am I seeing the, the height of the wave? Is it still low as I thought it was when I had first observed it out here and always making adjustments? And I'll show you later in the tutorial that sometimes you think you're on a good wave <laughs> and even myself with experience, and you end up having to kick out because it's gonna close out. So again, peak, shoulder as it drops down, and now as the wave gets shallower and shallower, you're gonna see it break here from right to left, okay, down the line. And now another thing I'll point out is we have Alan, who's more on the shoulder. So a couple things I wanna point out. If you're too far off the peak, so first of all, he needs to be looking on the inside. Obviously, I like to give our students right of way, but from an etiquette standpoint, um, he would be dropping in on me if he caught this. So again, that's where having your head up is valuable, but he's too far off the peak and steepness of the wave, so he's gonna miss the wave, okay? So I'm on the peak, and now the wave is going to break from right to left towards the shoulder, okay? Now, again, we have a situation where I'm observing the wave. This is a split peak where there's actually a right and a left off this wave. So here I am on here. We got a couple students here. I think I try to get Giannis on this wave um, right here. I'm, I'm pointing to him, but he, he doesn't seem to get in position. But here we have the peak. Again, you see steepness and height, and then you see fatness and dropping down. If your head is up, like Alan right here, and you're looking down the line, and you don't see a prominent drop, don't go. You know, I, I think more often than not, people just kind of guess and, and, and they don't deliberately think about this thing consciously. So the more conscious you are, the better chance you are to catch a wave in the, in the right spot, which is gonna be more fun because you're gonna go down the line and it's gonna give you more quality reps. Okay, so again, I just wanna point out we have the peak and then the shoulder, see how it's dropping down? And then my side, we have a, a peak here and then the shoulder, see the fatness, okay, of the wave. You see the steepness and height and then the fatness and lowering of height. So that's an indication that I have a left there, okay? And then I wanna position myself. And again, we'll go over the positioning a lot more in other videos. So Alan's gonna drop in on the right I'm gonna drop in on the left, and this is an example of a wave that has both a right and a left. And as the wave hits the shallower area, you're gonna see my side is, is gonna break from the highest point down towards the shoulder, and then Alan here, it's breaking from right to left on his side, okay? And then he kinda of loses it there, but again, the wave's still going. You see I'm still going, okay? Now, I hope all that makes sense. Again, I could go, <laughs> on for days about all the subtle things we're looking for but simply put we're looking for that peak in the shoulder but i can't stress enough about being patient and being conscious about this and again watching our technique videos and watching the videos in the links in uh, below in the description about paddling 
to the right spot because that also goes into wave selection, okay? Now, my head's up and I might catch a wave and I'll probably do this maybe two to 5% of the time on a session that I might think the wave is gonna line up and do what I want it to do, what I've guessed it's gonna do based on my wave selection, but then it just ends up not doing that because we're dealing with mother nature and sometimes the waves don't act how we, we anticipate, okay? And so I'm my head's up and I'm looking down the line and I go, oh, okay, this section's a little bit steep and it's actually gonna end up closing out down here and so I'm kicking out. And this kick out is kind of a pivot turn um, off the back where I'm getting to the back of my board and steering off the back of the wave. And again, my head's up, I'm anticipating, okay, maybe I have it right here, but then the wave is just not manufacturing what I thought it would do. And that might even happen further down the line as it happens here where I go to the right a little bit and then I go, okay, the wave is gonna close out and I get up and over um, the outside there, okay? Now, I talked about peak and shoulder and steepness and fatness and what to look for. But to me, another way to frame this is also what you don't want, okay? And what you don't want is basically this. Uh, here we have Goy, who's been down a few times. Goy's made great progress. I'm not trying to pick on him here, but this is a particularly fast wave and he's not in position. So his head's up and he should be, and I know it's not deliberate, he thinks it's a good wave, but if you're looking up and you can see this wave, he's not close to the shoulder. Now, some waves might have, this wave might have a shoulder over here, but he's just simply not close enough. So it's not necessarily a bad wave, it's just a bad wave in relation to where he is, so <laughs> to where you are. So if you're looking up and you're, you're trying to drop in, and especially if it's a faster wave and you're not within a board length or two of the shoulder, okay, especially on a faster wave, then that, that's not a, you're gonna be behind the section or it's a closeout, okay? So if your head's up, and certainly if your head's up and you're looking down here and you see white water and you see it breaking, that's not the wave you want, okay? So again, almost looking for what you don't want as well as what you do want, and then you see the wave close out, okay? So I'm gonna show some more examples of closeouts. Again, here we have a, a guest, his head is down. If his head was up, he would recognize, look how, it's, look how it's tall over here, okay? So we don't see, I'd like to see a drop like right here, all right? Dropping right here towards the shoulder, and we don't see that, and so his head should be up, and he should say, that's not the wave that I want. Instead, he goes, and we have a closeout, okay? See, again, the wave's gonna break. And, and again, I wanna point out that even if the shoulder was like right here and dropping, he'd probably be too far back that the wave is going to outrun him, okay? So it's really, and again, I'll cover that in more detail in the positioning for a wave. Um, this is really just wave selection, which these two go hand in hand. I mean, surfing is a dynamic sport, but for the sake of our tutorials, I try to really break things down. So head up and then going, okay, I got steepness, I have height over here, I'm not going to be taking this wave. So instead, you know, the wave's gonna close out on it, okay? I'll show you another close out here in a second, okay? So again, we have tall, height, steepness, and then where's the shoulder? And, and that's what I'll, I'll tell people too, like when we're on the water, I go, where's the shoulder as they're paddling for a wave? And if you can't say for sure, and obviously if you're early in the learning curve, you, you might be 10% sure. So that's okay, okay? You might just have to go. But as you gain experience, you wanna be more than 10% sure. You wanna go, okay, if I'm 50-50, and maybe I'm not going, okay? And, and being more patient. So again, we have steepness, we have height, but where's the shoulder? There's no shoulder here. And then especially if he's gonna go left here, and your head's up and you see the wave cresting like this, even like that, you're too far behind the section or it's a closeout, okay? So head should be up and you should not be going. Instead, you're gonna go and the wave's breaking and you just go on a big closeout, you're wasting energy. And, and again, I know it's not intentional, especially when you're learning, um, it's hard to do. And you see the wave kind of breaks to the right here, but then you'll see another guest 
but the wave actually, it does break to the right, but then look, it's breaking here. So if you look up and you're dropping in like Giannis is, and, and he's been down a couple times too, so a huge improvement, but his head's up and he's seeing that section coming at, he should be kicking out, okay? Or just not even taking that wave, okay? So again, look, almost looking for what we don't want just as much as what we do want. So again, we got one long line and it's like, where's the shoulder? Where's the shoulder? See this? There's no significant drop down, okay? There's no significant drop in altitude of the wave or amplitude. I'm not sure if amplitude is just for sound waves, but we'll go with that. Um, but there's no significant drop down. And so, at least in relation to where the surfer is, and so the wave's just gonna close out. Again, you see it's all the same height, okay? Wave is going to close out here, and then it's gonna close out over here, okay? So we really wanna be positioning ourselves in such a way that we're by the shoulder. Again, another close out here. Like you might ride it for a little bit like Alan's gonna do, but that's not really beneficial for us because you're wasting time, you're wasting energy, and you're not getting to practice skills like going down the line and turning. And it's just more fun when you get a longer, better ride, okay? So again, I'll just point out, it's all the same height, all the same height. And you're establishing that early on, not as you're dropping in, right? So all the same height. Um, I hope that makes sense. Wave selection is not an easy thing, but it's going to be a lot harder if you're not bringing it to your conscious awareness. So no matter where you're at, if you think you're more experienced, I've had guys that are down here that are guys and girls that are, are turning, they're pretty competent surfers, but I feel like their wave selection is probably an area that would help them improve their overall surfing more than anything because they're taking a fair amount of bad waves. So they're wasting time and they're wasting energy. And meanwhile, good waves could be coming through. So wave selection is always something we wanna be thinking about. And again, watch our other tutorials, watch the video. Um, if it's not out already, when it does come out, I'll put the links in the comments on how to paddle to the correct spot because that's a big part of wave selection and improving your overall paddling skills. But this is just really to establish the peak and shoulder and get that into your mind. And you could go to the beach and you could sit on the beach and go, okay, there's a peak, there's a shoulder. And then observe how the wave breaks. Does it do what you thought it would do, what you anticipated it was gonna do from the beach? And then even when you're on the water, you go, okay, here's a right. I'm anticipating it going right, and then it doesn't? Well, okay, you're gonna add that to that memory bank. And again, time and experience, and then your wave selection is gonna improve because hopefully you learn from that mistake of, oh, I thought it was a right, and it ended up closing out. And you go, the next time you see that, that same scenario, you go, ah, I'm gonna learn from that, and you're not going, okay? Um, so wave selection, it's more of an art than a science, but there is some science that we can break down and to understand better. And uh, come give us a visit in Nosara. We'd love to have you down. Check us out and hope you have a great day. Hope you're getting on the water and we hope to see you in Costa Rica soon.